Let's dig into this now with North Carolina Governor Pat McCrory, Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti, ABC's Chief Business and Economics Correspondent Rebecca Jarvis, and Dr. Heidi Cullen, a research scientist who's the Chief Climatologist at Climate Central, author of The Weather of the Future. Welcome to you all. Rebecca, let me begin uh, with you. Week after week after week of these storms, the economy definitely taking a hit. Absolutely, George, and we're seeing it on multiple levels. For individuals, there's lost wages. There's the increasing cost of heating homes. Some estimates say as much as $4.5 billion in additional spending will go into heating bills this winter. Then you have businesses. The airlines, for example, have suffered massively under the 75,000 flight cancellations. United saying it's an $80 million cost to them. Cities are experiencing it. Of course, they're paying more to clear the snow. Uh, Chicago came out and said, we expected to spend 20 million dollars on snow removal this this winter now it's 25 million and we're not even finished with the winter a number of economists are looking at this as cutting into gdp growth uh, an average number of economists are seeing it as a 0.3 percent hit on gdp growth and also there's just the law spending that consumers aren't doing because they are staying inside 15 billion dollars in not going to restaurants not going to the movies that's never going to come back those snow days add up government core we were all seeing those pictures out of your state this week it looks a little clearer this morning, but how much of this is going to set you back? Uh, it's having a big impact. The last two weeks has been extremely stunning and tough on the state. Uh, it's not as tough as the first episode of House of Cards, but it's been very <laughs> tough on all of us. Um, our budget is already at its maximum regarding snow removal, and that doesn't include our cities and small towns. We literally had six major metropolitan areas hit with a major snowstorm twice now in two weeks and it's it's a hit on our budget and it's going to be a hit on the economy because people haven't been spending money for the last uh, four or five days. I'm sure Kevin Spacey appreciated that shout out. We'll talk to him about that in a little bit. Merrick Garcetti, let me take it to you. We just heard that correspondent in California saying this is affecting everything. This drought is affecting everything in the state of California, even changing the way of life. Absolutely. This was the driest year on record, um, but, you know, it's coming at an immense cost, whether it's wildfires, whether it's changing how we get water. Um, but governors and mayors, you know, we don't have the luxury of debating the issue. I think it's clear human beings have had an impact on creating the problem, but we have to solve it now. Um, we're dealing with that in Los Angeles because we've done some common sense things out here to conserve water, change out our landscaping, uh, strengthen our building codes. But it's not a question anymore about this happening every so often. We're expecting this to be the new status quo. And you're getting into the question of why. Let me bring that to Heidi Cullen right here. And, and Heidi, first of all, one of the big points you make is that all extreme weather is connected. The drought in the West connected to the blizzards in the East. Yeah, well, Ginger did a great job setting it up. You know, the, the cold that we're seeing here is very much connected to this broader pattern. And really, when you put it into context, climate change, burning fossil fuels means that we're going to see more of these very expensive extreme weather events, specifically the kinds of extremes we can expect are more heat waves, droughts, floods. We're already seeing those. You know, this winter certainly doesn't disprove global warming. And I think it's one of these things where every time we have a really cold winter, we begin to ask ourselves all over again. So is global warming real or not? Cold winter doesn't mean global warming is gone. And really, when you look at the big picture, we've actually globally been incredibly warm. January is probably gonna come in as one of the top three warmest Januaries on record. And you know, the 10 warmest years have all happened since 1998. But your big point is that some of on these, on these intense weather systems, they are made more intense by climate change. That's right. I mean, basically when you warm up the planet, you've got more moisture in the atmosphere, which means that when it rains, it rains heavier, and you can also evaporate more. So that means that the tendency for drought is, is going to get worse. So the kinds of droughts that we've been seeing in Texas, out in California right now, we know that climate change makes them worse. It's actually very similar to cigarette smoking and lung cancer. It increases the likelihood of that risk. And we've already looked at the Texas drought in 2011. We know that climate change made that drought 20 times more likely. Governor McCrory, you accept that argument in the past. You've said that you believe that this whole issue of climate change is in God's hands. Well, I, I, I believe there is climate change. I'm not sure you can call it climate warming anymore, especially here in the Carolinas. I think the big debate is how much of it is man-made and how much it will just naturally happen as Earth re, uh, evolves. And uh, the question then is, what do we do about it and how much it will cost the consumer? I, I concentrate on cleaning the environment. I think that's where our argument should be, cleaning our air, cleaning our water, and cleaning the ground. And uh, we're in a brownfields area, which right in right now in Charlotte, 
where we cleaned up the ground right here and uh, cleaned up old brownfields, and now we have great new development. But the whole issue of uh, cleaning the environment, I think, is the issue we ought to talk about more than getting to a debate from the left and the right about uh, climate change or global warming. It's all about cleaning our environment and have a good quality of life for not only now, but for future generations. What do you make of that argument, Mayor Garcetti? Well, I, I think I agree. I mean, I think personally the evidence is clear that we've had a role in it. Um, I think people have recognized we've kind of lost the first few skirmishes with climate change. We're strengthening the defenses. Out here in Los Angeles, for instance, we consume the same amount of water as we did 30 years ago with a million more residents. So we're Americans. We adapt. We innovate. We're good at doing those sorts of things. Uh, but, you know, whether it's Mayor Brainerd uh, in Carmel, Indiana, changing out uh, stop uh, in intersections and making them roundabouts to take uh, global warming uh, CO2 emissions out of the air, or Mayor Becker in uh, Salt Lake City making sure his buildings are built in a green way. Uh, mayors, tribal leaders, governors are really taking action now because we can't afford to deal with the consequences. And Heidi Collin, you, Gary, Mayor Garcetti made the, made the point earlier, we have to get ahead of this because these patterns are not going to be reversed. We absolutely have to get ahead of it. And really, you know, when it comes to dealing with the, our environment, I think one of the things that we're saying is that burning fossil fuels has put additional heat trapping greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So cleaning up our atmosphere is, is part of cleaning up our environment. And it's all interconnected. And how about Rebecca? What are businesses doing to get ahead of this? It's innovate or die here, George. And a lot of businesses are, especially when you look at the food service businesses and the clothing businesses that rely so heavily on that supply, which is very much up in the air when you have these extreme weather patterns. Levi Strauss, for example, worked with farmers to come up with new, less water intensive ways to get that cotton that they use to make their denim. Caring, which is the luxury conglomerate that owns uh, Bottega Veneta, Gucci, they're working on sustainable ways to bring their product to market and they're working with their suppliers to get the actual underlying supplies that go into that clothing to make it more sustainable so that in any environment, whether the weather is going crazy or it's a normal weather pattern, they can deal with it and make their product and not be up in the air just because of the weather and a lot of food companies are doing the same thing. And Heidi Cullen, what's the single most important thing business and government and all of us can do together? I think, first of all, it's talk about it. And then I think it's really look at all of the opportunities that are presented to us to use energy smarter, to grow our food smarter, to treat our water resources with um, great care and, and conserve. So I think across the board, we've got to come together, stop treating it as a partisan issue because it really isn't, and just get started working on it. Let's hope we can do that. Thank you all very much.